This is Nick. This is Jack. It's Friday, the real Friday, February 16th, and today's bonus pod is the best one yet. The top three pop business news stories you need to know today. Yeah, it is. Jack and I noticed something recently. We noticed that some of our stories from like a year ago, they've got takeaways that are more relevant than ever today. Some of our favorite evergreen takeaways are about relationships. All right, so here's what we decided to do. We took three stories that are about business, but they're really about love. This is the relationship pod. You should share this with anyone you have a relationship with. Jack, let's get to it. What are our three stories for today's love pod? Our first story is from September of last year. The number one trend in millennial marriages right now is a prenup. It's the prenup pop. Prenuptial agreements have gone from taboo topic to financial fun. Our second story is from November of 2022. Tinder just showed us that despite inflation, you're still paying for passion. (laughs) Because dating isn't a cost. Dating is actually the greatest investment of our lives. And our third and final story is McDonald's from June of 2022. McDonald's stopped serving salads. Because in business and in relationships, you can't be a people pleaser. But Yetis, before we hit that wonderful mix of stories about relationships. Wonderful mix of stories for the relationship pod, Jack. There's a lyric Nick and I love from Chance the Rapper. Chance the Rapper said that some people are so poor, all they have is money. The rest of his rapping isn't about cash. It's about relationships. Because relationships are what turn money into true wealth. We think about relationships in the context of love. But really, if you think about it, relationships they have a pretty big impact on everything. Like every part of this economy, it's affected by relationships. Not just romantic relationships, also relationships with your family and friendships too. Dinks to sink. So Yetis, for today's pod, Jack and I want to try something a little bit different for you. We curated three business stories for your love life. Whether you're single, whether you're dating, whether you're happily married for 53 and a half years and counting. These three interesting stories are about business, but they're really about love. So Jack and I, we actually recorded these over the last two years in other T-Boy podcasts that we've done. We hope you enjoy them over the long weekend that we have. Whether you're on a long car ride with your buddy Timmy. Or you're simply riding solo. Yetis, this is our bonus relationship pod. Let's hit those three lovely stories. You're looking fantastic. 15 years before this song, two boys from the Northeast met in the dorm. They had an idea to cause a cultural storm. It's the best one yet, but the best is the norm. Jack, Nick, that's it. I don't even think they need to practice. 50%, that's a fat tip. T-Boy City on your at list. If you know, you know, cause we ready to go. We can't wait no more, so just start the show. Start the show. Our first story is a wild one. Yeah, dude, we're kicking it off with the most controversial new trend in the dating game. Jack and I saw it. We were shocked. It's prenups. And it's a story originally from September of last year. The unspoken new wedding trend that no one is talking about right now, it's the prenup. The prenup is trending. Millennials are causing a pop in prenuptial agreements, and we found three reasons why. But yet he's before Jack and I jump to this story. Uh, Trigger warning. If you just got engaged to a sugar mama, you might want to switch the pod to something else. Pause the pod. You're not going (laughs) to like the rest of this story. (laughs) Because besties and yetis, we need to talk about the prenup. Yes, we do. The prenup, the most controversial contract in all of love. But before we get to the story, let's flip open the glass right here. A prenuptial agreement is a contract. An agreement. Before. Pre. The marriage. Nuptials. Prenuptial agreements determine the financial conditions of a divorce. If there's no prenuptial agreement, then that judge is going to rule 50-50 in the case of a divorce over all those assets. If there is a prenup, then the situation will probably go back to like the pre-wedding situation for both sides. Now, Yetis, Jack and I should sprinkle on some context here because historically, the prenup was an offensive concept. Yeah, the prenup means you're putting money over romance. It means you're putting finances before forever. Yeah, remember George Costanza? He tried to break up with a woman by proposing a prenup and she laughed in his face. He like literally used a prenup as a weapon to get out of a relationship. That's how tough it is. Needless to say, it didn't work for George. Good luck, Susan. Another historical element of the prenup is that they were only for couples with a major wealth imbalance between the two. When a celebrity marries a normie, she doesn't want to lose her whole fortune in a breakup, so she has him sign a prenup. 
Again, that's what we think about the prenup when we get it in our heads. But here's the news. Millennials have officially embraced the prenup. Millennials have normalized the prenup. The prenup is the new wedding trend nobody's talking about. Yeah, it's like a photo booth. Or a donut wall. They're at like every wedding and you didn't realize it. <laughs> get this, Yetis. According to one survey in 2010, only 3% of couples got prenups. But another survey last year by the Harris Poll show that that percentage is up to 15%. 15% of couples now get prenups. <laughs> say yes to the dress and then say yes to the prenup, Jack. I actually say my lawyer's going to have to see this before I say yes. <laughs> so Yetis, Jack and I got curious about this story. We jumped in T-boy style and we discovered three reasons why millennials love prenups. Three reasons that our generation is popping the question on paper before at the altar. Three reasons why you get down on one knee and ask, sign here and here and initial here, and I'm just going to need your John Hancock on page 12. The first reason, it's just realism. And because our generation grew up seeing a lot of divorce all around us, so it's naive to think that all marriages last forever. The number one reason for divorce is money, and millennials don't want to repeat that mistake. No, they don't. Which leads to the second reason for the jump in prenups, the delayed wedding. Millennials are marrying later than previous generations, so they have more assets of their own by the time they get married. With more money at stake for men and women, you're more likely to get a prenup. And the third reason we think there's a prenup trending right now, it's that we've all misunderstood the prenup. The third reason, it's our takeaway. Jack, let's lawyer up and hit that takeaway. So Jack, what's the takeaway for our buddies who are everyone getting married? It's time to redefine the prenup. Yetis, full disclosure here. This is Nick, that's Jack, and neither one of us actually has a prenup. Yeah, I didn't sign a prenup. But we do have friends with prenups, and not all of them had prenups because of a wealth imbalance. We think the prenup has been misunderstood. It's been defined by an old, outdated reputation. So besties, here's the new way to think about the prenup. The prenup is an open conversation about all your finances. The prenup is hoping for the best, but having a plan if the worst should happen. The prenup is having an awareness and an agreement about what each brings to the table. Which is their assets. And what each owes. Which is their debts. Marriage is the biggest legally binding contract of your life. The finances should be clear. And divorce is the biggest legal change of your life. You don't want it to be messy should it happen. So Yetis, we're not endorsing the prenup and we're not judging it. We're just saying that what a prenup means today is different than what it's meant in the past. So it's time to redefine the prenup. Yetis, we had to do the second story because we just loved the takeaway. Yeah, it's about the most important investment of our lives, the person you choose to be with. This story is originally from November of 2022. The stock of Match, like the dating app icon that owns Tinder, it's up 20% since its earnings, we noticed. Because Tinder just told us you're investing in dating. Oh, Jack, let's start with the dark stuff first. You know, you got mortgage debt, you got student debt, but what is like the most painful debt of all these days? Trigger warning. Yeah. It's dating debt. Dating debt. Get these numbers, Yetis. 22% of millennials go into debt because of dating these days. It sucks. Inflation is destroying the first date. You got roses, concert tickets, cocktails, nightcaps, appetizers. Prices are up and all that stuff. The Chase Sapphire card is crashing your date. It's the third wheel. It's brutal. But here is the fascinating, ironic twist, besties. You're paying more for dates. But you're also paying more to date right now. Look what we noticed in Match's earnings last week. This is interesting. The Match group added 200,000 paying users in the past year. Tinder, which is Match's profit puppy, they saw a 7% jump in Tinder Plus, Tinder Gold, and Tinder Platinum subscriptions. I haven't been on the Tinder app in a while, but I used to be an economy customer. Let's put it that way. It does sound a little bit more like Delta these days. Now, what shocks Nick and me is, in this economy? Yeah, this economy, the stock of Match, it's now up 20% in the last week because 17 million of us are paying for power swipes <laughs> on Tinder. Inflation. We are cutting back on fashion, but we're still poning up for the passion. Now, Yetis, Jack and I should sprinkle on some more context here. Like a drink on a date, yes, that is a cost. But paying for a dating app? can actually save you money. Okay, Yetis, let's uh, let's take a look at Tinder for a second. Let's look at the monetization. All right, it's 30 bucks a month if you want to pay for Tinder Gold. That's a lot. That's two Netflixes. But using Tinder Gold, 
will enhance your chances of finding the right person. And that's because that premium feature comes with super likes. Super likes. It means when you swipe right on somebody, that like will be seen more prominently by the person on your screen. It's like Cupid has a special arrow that is filled with adrenaline and steroids. It's like Cupid is shooting a special, special arrow for your account. Yeah, so the way we see it, maybe Tinder Gold helps you avoid wasted dates with someone who, you know, never had a chance. Let's be honest, they never had a chance. So you saved money by not splitting tacos on that terrible date with Terry. So Tinder Gold got you to your special someone faster with fewer wasted whiskey sours. And getting to that special someone can save you big bucks over time. Like, for example, if you move in together, boom, your rent, it just got cut in half. If you're serious, they won't judge you for ordering a cheaper glass of wine like you prefer anyways. I'll take a glass of the Sutter Home White Zinfandel, please. You know what, honey? You be you. Boom. Those savings from rent and wine, that pays for like years of that Tinder Plus subscription you were worried about. $360 in one year on Tinder Platinum, but you're saving thousands of dollars every month now. We are facing a recession, but people are paying for dating apps at all-time high levels. Because dating apps can really be seen as an investment in finding love. So, Jack, what's the takeaway for our buddies getting a return on Tinder over at Match? The most important investment of your life, it's your life partner. Yeah, it is. Financially, mentally, emotionally, professionally. Look at every single metric out there. Just look at them. The biggest impact on your future is who you commit to. Your husband, your wife, or your partner, they are the support system for when your career slumps and you need motivation. Your honey, that's the voice that will sway your spending habits. You end up spending more time with that boo than any other person on earth. In a funny way, it's almost strange not to be investing money in finding your critical asset, the person you're with. Jack, you're dropping 15 bucks a month to watch four hours of Netflix, but zero dollars <laughs> on who you spend forever with? <laughs> Dating involves costs. We know it. It's true. But those pale in comparison to the returns of finding love. Because the most important investment of your life is your life partner. And Yeti's, our third and final story, doesn't sound like a relationship story at first. It was a decision McDonald's made about their menu. Yeah, a funny thing, it was actually the healthiest decision like McDonald's has ever made, and it has nothing to do with calories. This story is originally from June of 2022. For our second story, McDonald's just cut basically every single healthy item from its menu's history. McDonald's was being a people pleaser. Yeah. And that can be problematic. All right, Jack. Over the last 10 years, McDonald's, they've been under some pressure, right? They've been under pressure. They've been under pressure to add stuff to the menu that's not going to supersize Keep you. Keep the Big Mac, but add an option to sub the fries with a little bit of kale. Keep the Coke, but give people an option to do half Coke, half Diet Would a little arugula kill you? <laughs> Here's the news. McDonald's is adjusting their menu nationwide to have fewer items on the menu. Okay, so Jack and I were curious. You know, they're slimming down the menu. Um, What is it going to look like now? This isn't just slimming down the menu. This is a salad slaughter. Okay, Jack and I are going to sum up what we discovered. So McDonald's <laughs> didn't say this at all, but Jack and I are calling it it's the end of the era of healthy options. Yeah. Here are the specific items that have been cut from McDonald's menu. Hit us, Jack. All the salads. All right. The fruit and yogurt parfait. Really? The grilled chicken sandwich. That's pretty good. The egg white McMuffin. <laughs> that was They're a classic. all gone. Yeah, it is. if it's not deep fried, it is M-I-A. If it photosynthesizes... It's done for. Well, sliced apples and oatmeal, those are the only heart-approved items that'll stay. They're there. Those are the two healthier items that will stay in the Happy Meals probably. That's how much ketchup you put on them, but yeah. <laughs> but McDonald's gave Bloomberg three reasons for cutting these items from the menu. First, Jack, straight up cost. Fruit costs more per pound than meat. Okay, then time. Tossing a salad takes a lot of time. And then finally, the last reason they're cutting all these healthy items is the workers. Okay, have you tried separating egg yolks from the egg whites? It's, it's like a balancing yeah. act. You got to do this like nine times and then there's that one big glob that just won't separate. The hens are laughing at you. They think it's well, a joke. there's a tight job market and they don't have time to train people to separate these healthy items. Ipso facto, Jack, the egg McMuffin. It stays. Jack, the egg white McMuffin. It's gone. So McDonald's is slaughtering these salads, but analysts expect that its profitability is going to rise. Not like over time, 
immediately. Because it's less cost, it's less time, and it requires less worker training. Get this, their profitability is expected to rise 14% in the next three months. Healthy isn't healthy for profits at McDonald's. So Jack could not have said that better. So what is the takeaway for our buddies over at McDee's? You can't be a people pleaser with products. All right, besties, get up close here. Interesting thing Jack and I should share with you. Jack is a people pleaser. We've talked about it a bunch. It's wonderful. I love that part about Jack. But for Jack, it's also, it's complicated, right? It's I thought it was a strength of mine. Yeah. But being a people pleaser can be a weakness too. Jack, tell us a little okay, more. Okay, for example, you go on like a, a vacation. All right. If you're a people pleaser, you might feel the pressure to visit everybody you know in that city or that place you're traveling to. But what about like your relaxation? Yeah, and those people may not want to see you. Yeah, what about your family's like, joy. You don't yeah. just want to please your friends. What about you? Yeah. Right? And those people may not want to leave their <laughs> homes to see you. <laughs> so Jack and I were looking at the situation. McDonald's is people pleasing too, but with products. Yeah. McDonald's wanted to please health conscious diners and make them feel welcome at McDonald's. But it's healthy items are less profitable for McDonald's and customers didn't even want them in the first place. Salads are popular. But they're not popular at McDonald's. So McDonald's people-pleasing, it was hurting its core business. And you have to take care of yourself. Self-care isn't selfish. McDonald's, it's done being a people-pleaser. Jack, could you whip up the takeaways for us for today's Relationship Pod? Millennials are driving a trend toward prenups. It's the prenup pop. It's time to redefine the prenup. For our second story, Tinder just told us that you're willing to pay more for a dating app. You'll pay for passion. Because the most important investment of your life is your life partner. And our third and final story, McDonald's stopped selling salads because it's done being a people pleaser. Because you can't be a people pleaser with products or with relationships. Now, time for the best fact yet. This one whipped up by Jack and me. What do we got, Jack? Now, you know, love is a common theme in songs, in music, you know? Love is also a burning <laughs> ring, I believe, Jack. <laughs> well, if you think about it, how many songs can you name that have love in the title? Like so many. Top of my head, I'm like, I got 20 right here. I don't even need a pen. What is love, baby, don't hurt me? What's love got to do with it? Got to do with it? Love on top. Love story. Love in this club. Love on the brain. Yeah, if you type love into Spotify search bar, first of all, the app will break. Because there's that many songs with love in the title. Get this, Yetis. About two-thirds of all music created in the world is about love. Isn't that wild? Various studies indicate a range between 57% and 67% of all the songs in the world are about themes of love. Because as Chance the Rapper once said, some people are so poor... All they have is money. Or as John Lennon once said, all you need is love. Love. Love is all you need. Yetis, you look fantastic for today's relationship pod. We hope you found something in here that was useful, amusing, delightful, or all of the above. So if you did share it with a buddy, could be anybody, could be your buddy, Timmy. Then that would help our relationship because that's how the show grows. You couldn't have put it better, Jack. Celebrate the wins this weekend and Jack and I will see you Tuesday. Have a fantastic long weekend. This is Jack. I own stock of Bumble. What, what are the other, a third? <laughs> yeah, what's, what's the other third about? Yeah. Yeah, I, I genuinely, <laughs> I think they're about bringing milkshakes to the yard. <laughs> I think that's a love song, Jack. <laughs> <laughs>